Greetings once again, this side of heaven. This is Evangelist Mike Brown with Sanctifying Truth. This will be episode 59, July 17th, 2019. And oh, how we praise our Lord Jesus Christ for this another opportunity to bring the words of the living God to you. We're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 1. And we're looking today at the appearing of Jesus Christ. My friend, he said, if I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am in the Father's house, there ye may be also. John chapter 14. If you have your Bible and you'd like to follow along with me, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of of the blood of Jesus Christ. And you can check Hebrews chapter 12, the sprinkling of that blood, the blood of sprinkling of Jesus Christ was carried to the mercy seat and applied right before the throne of grace. He says, Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He got up from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. That is our eternal inheritance. Every child of God, my friend, has a home, a mansion in heaven that the Lord Jesus Christ has gone to prepare. New Jerusalem, Revelation 21, is prepared for the church, being prepared by our Lord, and that will be our eternal abode in the ages of ages to come. He says in verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith, not through works. Your good works are worthless. That's for reward. Our salvation is kept by faith through unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Romans chapter 8 teaches that the sons of God one day will be manifest. My friend, we won't be wondering one day who's saved and who isn't. Verse 6, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor, and glory, now get it, at the appearing of Jesus Christ. He is going to appear in our earth's atmosphere. This is the first stage of the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, called His appearing. Well, my friend, when He comes with the church in Jude Verse 14, Behold, Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of His saints. An innumerable number. My friend, that will be at the end of the great tribulation. But He's got to come for the saints first. So the appearing is for the saints. And then we come with our Lord Jesus Christ back to this earth 
at the end of Jacob's trouble. At that point, my friend, our Lord's feet will touch down on the Mount of Olives from whence he went up at the ascension. Acts chapter 1, verse number 8 of 1 Peter, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. If you're a child of God and you've been washed in the precious blood of Christ, you've received him by faith, you've put your faith in his death, burial, and glorious bodily resurrection three days after his crucifixion death. My friend, you have never seen him by the physical eye. You've only seen him by the eye of faith. But one day, when he shall appear, we shall behold him with our glorified eyes. We shall see him as he is. Verse number nine, receiving the end of your faith, not of your works. We're not enduring to the end of nothing. Even the salvation of your souls of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. My friend, the Bible teaches from Genesis to Revelation, a sinner is saved by God's grace through the sinner's faith. Faith in the revealed truth of his day. Romans chapter 4, before the law was given to Moses, Abraham was saved by believing. Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Righteousness was imputed to Abraham by his faith in what God said. And that's the only way you will have the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. For by grace, God's grace, are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The very best Christian cannot boast over his salvation. For it is God's possession. We belong to Him. We're saved by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave Himself for us. Now verse number 10, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ Notice, which was in them, the Old Testament prophets, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ, number one, his 33 and a half years on this earth, the sufferings of Christ, which ended on the cross of Calvary, and the glory that should follow. My friend, he got up from the dead, glorified, perfectly in every way. Verse 12, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. The angels are bloodless creatures. They cannot be redeemed. The fallen angels that fell with Lucifer cannot be redeemed. Peter wrote this epistle general to the Jewish scattered strangers of whom he was the apostle to. But this book also applies to all Gentiles who have never seen their Lord Jesus Christ 
but long for his appearing where they can behold him. Now back down there in verse number 7, Peter says you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. Those temptations are many for every saint, every child of God. Temptations is to prove it's, it's a trial, the trial of man's fidelity, integrity, virtues, and constancy, an enticement to sin, temptation, whether arising from the desires or from the outward circumstances. The trial of the Christian's faith is more precious than gold when the cleansing fire purges away all the dross that floats to the top of the cauldron and is skimmed off the top, leaving nothing but pure, precious gold. That's what God, God is going to get out of our lives. In the end, my friend, precious gold. God's nature at the end of our trials of life, they might be found unto praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Peter's mind is on the promise of our Lord in John chapter 14, verse 1 through 6. I've already alluded to it. And the announcement of the two angels that Jesus Christ would come again to receive the church in the rapture. Now in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 13, Peter says, But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Over there in Acts chapter 1, we have the ascension of our Lord. In Acts chapter 1, our Lord commanded His disciples in verse 8, this is the duty of every child of God. He said, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. He came upon them at Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. He came upon you when you were saved by the grace of God and filled with the Spirit of God. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, to the people you don't necessarily like, you'll love after you get a burden of the Holy Spirit for their souls that's lost and on its way to hell. He said, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth, and when he had spoken these words, or these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. The Lord Jesus Christ ascended up into the clouds by his own glorified power. And when they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, that's two angels, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, the man Jesus, but now glorified, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as you have seen him go into heaven. My friend, he is coming again, and he's coming to take over in his glorified body. First John chapter number three, the words of the living God say, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, even us, John the Apostle says, sinners saved by the grace of God, 
that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Religion did not know him. Israel missed their visitation by God manifest in the flesh. Verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, there is his appearing, my friend, for the church, we shall be like him, like him. Well, how was he? He was doing real good in his glorified body. Thirty-three and a half years old, about, in a perfect, sinless body that never decayed, never grew old, and my friend will have eternal life and will live and reign with our Lord Jesus Christ forever. We shall be like Him. Forget it, we shall see Him as He is. We're going to behold Him. That song says we shall behold Him face to face in all of His glory. We shall see Him as He is. As He is, is in Revelation chapter 5. He is seen with the wounds in His hands, the wound in His side from that spear, the wounds in His feet. The crucifixion wounds are still there. Not scars like you see in a Roman Catholic painting. No, my friend, as he is, are wounds. And he showed those wounds to his disciples in the upper room after his resurrection. And he invited Thomas to reach hither thy finger and thrust it into my side and into my hands and be not believe uh, faithless but believing my friend we shall see him as he is a lamb as a lamb slain from the foundation of the world philippians chapter 3 and verse number 20 the bible says for our conversation that is our citizenship. If you're saved by the grace of God, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. It's in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body like changing clothes, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, that is, his resurrected body. We'll see him as he is in his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. God's not finished with you, Christian. When you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, your spirit was born again by the Spirit of God. Your soul was saved from hell. But your body is quite another thing. And your old Adamic nature. But one day, friend, it's going to be changed. We're going to put off this vile body and put on our glorified resurrection body where there'll be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more dying, no more anything that is negative. I'm talking about at His appearing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant brethren. We've got a lot of ignorant brethren today in these last days of the church age that preach that the church is going some three and a half years into Jacob's trouble, mid-tribulation rapture, and some of them even say you're going to have to endure the whole seven years. 
hogwash. He says concerning them which are asleep, their body is asleep. The no hellers teach that the soul goes to sleep. Oh no, my friend. The spirit goes to God who gave it when the soul leaves the body. And that soul goes to its predetermined destiny, heaven or hell. There is no purgatory. And you better not bank on it, my friend. You better not listen to the harlot church. You better get saved by the grace of God and washed in his precious blood where you can meet him in the air. He says that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Outside of Jesus Christ, many sinners say, I hope I'm saved. I hope I make it. I've heard that and I've heard that and heard that. Since I was saved and witnessed to sinners since 1979, and I've told them over and over, you're hopeless without the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior in your heart. For if we believe, here's the condition, my friend, for meeting Jesus in the air. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him the saints that have gone before us, our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, all the way back, my friend, to Pentecost. When the church began, the dead in Christ will rise first. Their sleeping body only is sleeping, waiting on resurrection morning. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, and by the way, the word of the Lord will not steer you wrong. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? For all the promises of God are yea, and in him, in Christ, amen, to the glory of God that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. We will not ascend up before them, is what Paul is saying. He says, for the Lord himself. He's not sending Michael, the archangel, nor is he sending Gabriel or anybody else. He purchased the church with his own blood, Acts twenty twenty eight. And my friend, it is his right of redemption to come and receive our bodies unto himself. He shall descend with a shout from heaven, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. They'll get a jump on you, friend. They're coming up out of the graves first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them, with the dead in Christ, in the clouds, just like in Acts chapter 1, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. You're talking about a happy reunion. First of all, we're going to be, we're going to have a reunion with our loved ones, our friends in Christ, first of all. And then the whole crowd is going up to meet the Lord in the air. And my friend, you're talking about standing, bowing in awe. When we see our Lord with our glorified eyeballs and we see him face to face and he shows us the wounds in his hands and feet and side and shows us what he went through and we behold him, my friend, it'll take a glorified body to be able to endure the joy and the elation we will be in. Bless the Lord. O oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. 
Verse 18, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You talking about words of comfort. My friend, there they are. There is the promise of His coming. The promise of His appearing. He shall appear for His bride, the church. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. You know what he's doing, friend? His great high priestly office. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2.5 Not the mediatrix, not the woman, Mary. The man who paid your sin debt on Calvary's cross. Hebrews 9 verse 25 Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. Hebrews 10, 12 says, But this man, speaking of Jesus, after he had offered himself one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 26 of Hebrews 9, For then... Must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world? But now once in the end of the world, we're in the last days, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself? John chapter 1 verse 29, John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Those Old Testament animal sacrifices were only temporary covering for sin. Verse 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, And that's for all who will receive Him. And unto them that look for Him shall He appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Our sins were deposited in hell in the heart of the earth when our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. During those three days, my friend, our Lord took care of our sins. And we bless His wonderful, holy name for this. And the Bible says in Titus chapter 2 and verse number 11, For the grace of God which bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. There's everyone included. Forget what the Calvinists say. My friend, the Lord Jesus Christ died for all, for all were dead. Romans chapter 5. Teaching us, the grace of God teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that Blessed hope. Do you have it in your heart, friend? And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us, that He might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto Himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Over there in 2 Timothy chapter number 4 and verse number 1, the Apostle Paul says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, that's the living in Christ, and the dead, the wicked dead, 
who have rejected him. Notice, at his appearing and his kingdom. Two different judgments. And my friend, they're separated by at least a thousand, one thousand and seven years, including the time of Jacob's trouble, the tribulation period, and the millennial kingdom of Jesus Christ. You have the judgment seat of Christ that will take place uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. That's when the saints will be judged for their servitude for their Lord and receive a reward or loss of reward. But my friend, the wicked dead will be judged in Revelation chapter 20 at the end of the millennial kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. And the, ver the Bible says in verse number 8 of First Timothy or 2 Timothy chapter 4, Henceforth there is laid up for me, that's in heaven, a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, that judgment day. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love, watch it, his appearing. My friend, if you're a child of God, you would love his appearing today. If you do not love his appearing, you've got problems with God, friend. You've got sin between you and your Savior. You've got real problems. Second Corinthians, that crown of righteousness is for those who love His appearing for His saints. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 5. Now He that wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. The earnest is the down payment on what will be redeemed when Christ appears. And by the way, we're sealed unto the day of the redemption by the Spirit of God, Ephesians 4.30. In other words, you couldn't go to hell if you tried, friend. You can outpry yourself out of the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ and the hand of God the Father. The Spirit of God is keeping you by the power of God. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are home in the body, that's our temple, this body of flesh, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. When he shall appear, we shall appear with him in glory. Oh, blessed thought. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 1. Paul says, If, condition, if ye then be risen with Christ, if your spirit has been resurrected in the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of God, and it has been, if you've been down on your knees as a humble, hell-bound sinner, and you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. If you then be risen with Christ, we were buried with Him, and my friend, risen to walk in newness of life. And all believers' baptism is, is to to be a sign of the death, burial, and resurrection of our old man. We're buried with him in baptism and risen to walk in newness of life. Romans chapter 6. And that water baptism adds nothing to your spirit baptism. Wherefore, as by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. 
There's no such thing taught in the Word of God as baptismal regeneration. That's a lie of the false church and all the harlot churches that have submitted themselves to Rome. Seek those things which are above. That's a commandment. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. That's the right hand of the Father's power. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. The the Laodicean church has set their affection on things on the earth. And they're going to lose all rewards. No rewards at the judgment seat of Christ and no ruling and reigning with Christ in His millennial kingdom. And you'll be ashamed forever. Verse number 3, For ye are dead, and your life, your life is hid with Christ in God. That's God the Father. Now you think the devil can get you out of Christ and God the Father's hands? It ain't happening, friend. Verse number 4, When Christ, who is our life, If anything else has more of your attention, more of your uh, more of your fondness toward, more that you care about, my friend, there's something wrong in your heart. You're either not saved by the grace of God, or you're so backslidden on Him, it's not even pitiful. When Christ who is our life, get it, shall appear. That's the rapture of the church, friend, for His bride, the church. When He shall appear, then shall ye also appear with Him in glory. That's how quick it's going to take place. He appears, then we appear with Him in glory. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Behold, I show you a mystery We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now get this. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. That's not the blinking of an eye. That's the twinkling of an eye. When he appears in the atmosphere, we rise up and appear with him in glory. We need no spaceship, friend. We're going to take a plain air ride to the Father's house with our Lord Jesus Christ. Now the question is, are you prepared to meet Him in the air today, this very day? The Bible teaches in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, Behold, today is the day of salvation. Behold, now is is the accepted time. Not tomorrow. My friend, if you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, receive Him today. If the Holy Spirit of God is troubling the waters of your heart, my friend, I bid you to fall down before Him. Our Lord says, Come unto Me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you Rest, take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Proverbs 15 teaches that the way of the transgressors is hard. Sinner friend, you're going the long, hard route that leads to destruction. Christian, are you prepared to meet your Lord in the air today? That's the question. Well, thank you for listening. May the Lord bless you. Good day.